Welcome to Studio B here. And you're right, massive unemployment, a serious concern. And we talk about jobs, jobs, jobs. But in this case, it's really the lack of jobs that voters are very much focused on in this election. And this is an issue that simply won't go away. Candidate Romney has talked about creating more jobs. President Obama has talked about his record of creating jobs in the United States. And it's been a difficult four years for President Obama trying to move those numbers. Michelle McCorry is at the headquarters of the NASDAQ in New York City, and she takes a look at us, for us, the last four years. Phil, of job in growth. September 2012, U.S. unemployment fell to 7.8%. Now, the last time it stood at that level was 1992, and another Democratic candidate, Bill Clinton, won the presidency that year, focusing on the economy. For the 20 year period prior to Barack Obama taking office, U.S. unemployment averaged 5.5% a year. Fast forward to January 2009. Obama takes the oath of office. The unemployment rate then was 7.8%, and it was the start of the Great Recession. Unemployment climbed over 9% and stayed there for the next three years. Then, just two months before Election Day 2012, unemployment fell. For the third time in two decades, it edged just below 8%. Now, unemployment is lower, but not low enough to get Obama out of a re-election red zone. Americans have not sent a president back to the White House with unemployment this high since just before World War II in 1940. The president then was FDR. Now, another U.S. president from that era, Roosevelt's successor, Harry Truman, said, it's a recession when your neighbor loses his job, it's a depression when you lose yours. And Americans seem to agree with Truman and vote accordingly. So if Obama wins with unemployment this high, he'll have done what no other incumbent has done in more than 70 years. All right, at this time I want to introduce Stephen Roach, senior lecturer and senior fellow at Yale University. Thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure we're, to be with you, Phil. We're going to have a long evening together, but before mm -hmm. we get started with this um, Q&A, I want you to take a listen at what the president and what the governor had to say about jobs. You know, in 2008, we were in the middle of two wars and the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. And today, our businesses have created nearly five and a half million new jobs. And this morning, we learned that companies hired more workers in October than at any time in the last eight months. He said he was going to lower the unemployment rate down to 5.2 percent right now. Today we learned that it's actually 7.9 percent, and that's 9 million jobs short of what he promised. Unemployment is higher today than when Barack Obama took office. Think of that. Unemployment today is higher on, than on the day Barack Obama took office. All right. We now have a discussion with Stephen Roach about this. And, you know, you heard both the governor and also the president talk about the jobs figure. Is it possible they're both right? No, they're not. Uh, the labor market is in terrible shape. With all due respect to the president, what you heard from him was spin. The, uh, the unemployment rate is 7.9% today on the basis of the, the published numbers. But, Philip, that excludes 5 million Americans who have just given up looking for work uh, since 2006. Uh, and, and sadly, our statisticians don't count them. You know, if you surrender the job search, they take you out of the survey. Is that ridiculous or not? Throw those guys back in, just that one calculation alone takes the unemployment rate to 11%. All right, That's a terrible number. Before you go there, uh, I know, Matt, we've got a chart of the, the jobs data over the past couple of years that we can put up and Stephen can take a look at it, but it's a, it's a chart that shows the unemployment rate dropping since President Obama took office to where we are today. Isn't it true that the job market is better than when President Obama took office? Again, if I, if, if I put all the people in the workforce who used to be in just a few years ago, the unemployment rates come down, but it's come down from 12 to 11 percent. And it's not the 7.9 percent that the Bureau of Labor Statistics reported uh, last Friday. So sure, it's, it's improved, but I mean, an 11 percent adjusted unemployment rate? That, that is a horrific number. I would not call that improvement by any stretch of the imagination, Philip. One point of controversy has been the fact that Ben Bernanke is now known as the quantitative easing Fed chairman. We had one, right. two, three, and so on. Very creative man. There, there are a lot of jokes about this, but there's a lot of serious discussion about this because 
Candidate Romney, if he does in fact get elected, has said that he would find a new Fed chairman, which means possibly the end of quantitative easing. In your view, has quantitative easing helped or hurt the economy? Well, it's a, it's a, it's a subtle um, way to answer it, but we've had three rounds of quantitative easing, better known in the trade as QE. The first round came in the depths of the crisis, and that really put a floor on markets uh, in, in chaos, and, and I'd say that worked. The second round, the third round, we've also done something called Operation Twist. I will not bore you or your viewers with that. Uh, I don't think they've worked. Uh, if they have worked, the, the returns have been uh, minimal. And they really don't address the fundamental problems that are ailing American families, which are balance sheet problems, no saving uh, and too much debt. So what worked once has, has, has really pretty much failed the second, third, and you know the subsequent times that, that lie ahead. All right, good stuff. We're going to have much more on this. For Great. now, we send it back to Mike.